Welcome everyone. I'm Steven, a business development manager on Google Play. And along with my colleague Brian, we hope to regale you with some tools and tips for growing and engaging users on Google Play. Google Play gives you access to a massive use of one billion potential users. Your challenge as a developer is to acquire the right users, use their feedback to improve your app, and engage them in the long run. We're going to walk you through some tools that Google Play offers to make this easy. We've parted out some of the topics here. I'm going to cover store listings and experiments. Brian will then cover interactions with users, translation, alpha beta testing, as well as developer pages. We have some cool giveaways for you as well. So before I begin, I wanted to share with you that formerly, I was a naval officer on a nuclear submarine. And uh, I actually see some parallels between life on a submarine and the store listing that I'd like to share with you. So icons, icons, they're everywhere. My submarine, for example, in itself was an icon. It represented strength and deterrence. You should be asking yourself, what does your icon say about your app or game? It's the first thing people see. And it doesn't matter how great your app or game is if no one downloads it. An effective app icon, app or game icon, serves as a quick identifier for your app. You should also think about changing it up seasonally or perhaps around holiday specials. Next is your title. It's also one of the first things people see. I can refer to my old submarine as the USS West Virginia SSBN 736 Gold Group 10, or I could just refer to it as the 736 Gold, which is what most people called it. Similarly, with your app, you want to keep it short and sweet. Does anyone see the play on words in this game's title? You want to be thoughtful about your brand and anticipate the future. For example, how will a version 2 look? Next are descriptions. You can imagine on a submarine, descriptions are everywhere. But the last thing you want to do is go into a radiation zone without wearing your thermoluminescent dosimeter. In your app, you want your description to be short, and you want to use bullets to highlight your product offering and tell the user what your, what your app or game actually does. This is also a great place to talk about what's new. On a submarine, you can imagine day in and day out, you get bored with the same food, eating the same thing, 100 days in a row. But on occasion, we would hear that there's some new food coming, and we'd all get excited. right? And I distinctly remember one year uh, sort of floating around at 400 feet below the surface. We actually had turkey on Thanksgiving, believe it or not. So that was cool. We were excited about what was new. Similarly, with your, with your Play Store listing, you could talk about a potential UI redesign or now that you may be supporting where. So this brings us to store listing experiments. This allows you to test different parts of your store listing page. There are several things you can test. Your icon, your feature graphic, screenshots, your promotional video, and your description. All to see how these assets may improve your conversion rate. On summary, we tested various approaches. Experiment A could have been approaching a target from beneath. Whereas experiment B could have been approaching a target from behind through the baffles. We would then take that data and decide what's the best way to approach our targets going forward based on their attributes. Similarly, with store listing experiments, you can use data instead of intuition to optimize the text and graphics of your store listing. So you want to start with testing icons. Icons can have the greatest impact either positive or negative, on your installs. Test early. Second, you want to have a question in mind when you're testing. You want to have an objective. For example, does artwork visualizing gameplay drive more installs than artwork that doesn't? So best practices. Developers have been asking us for best practices. We'd like to share with you some things that we think could help or that you should consider when running your experiments. 
So first, as I mentioned before, conduct, you know, start with a hypothesis. Then you want to test it. You want to test one thing at a time. You want to iterate. And you want to do the test long enough to get statistical significance. You don't want to, you don't want to cut the test off too short. And then, of course, you want to pay attention to the banner in the dev console, which gives you your results. Probably most importantly, you want to be bold. Minor little adjustments probably will be inconclusive. So, so make big, broad changes and test those. I'm going to walk you through a few examples here uh, for, from successful game developers who uh, use store listing experiments. For example, Congregate. You know, t tested different icon art, and they saw a 91% increase in installs just by testing the icon. As you can see, Rovio used three rounds of testing until they found the optimal winner. This may have taken them a little bit longer, but it was completely worth the investment um, as it, you know, they were able to iterate and incorporate their learnings, and they actually saw a pretty good boost. Does anyone see which icon, which variant of which experiment is the winner? All right. In contrast, here's an experiment conducted on screenshots. Dots, a game developer, they use a very, they use a very measured and controlled approach in testing their screenshots. So they held everything constant except the illustration of the gameplay mechanics. And they also had a great result. That's all for store listings and experiments. I'd like to thank you and turn things over to uh, Lieutenant Brian. Brian will take the helm and bubble you up through the surface. Thanks, Stephen. So now that you've tested your store listing page to see what resonates best with your sailors, your submarine is ship shape and ready to launch. So the next step is to interact with your crew through the ratings and review section of the developer console. It's one of the most important aspects of the Play Store, and it's incredibly easy for you, the developer, to do. So ratings are one of the top ways that users will market your app to other people. They're also going to help you understand what users love and hate about your app and how their sentiment has changed over time. Replying to reviews is one of the best ways to create meaningful connections with your users and show them that you listen to their feedback to improve your product. Now, we've listened to you developers' feedback and added some features that you wanted most within the developer console. So the ratings chart that you see is now available on the reviews page making it easy to track trends in individual star ratings. And you can also search for specific reviews and do a free text search across all of your reviews. Recently launched, too, one of the most requested features, being able to get a notification once a user updates a review that you've responded to. Now, ratings can materially impact your installs. So you want to work towards improving your scores so that you could even be promoted by Google Play. We have a minimum bar of 4.0 for inclusion in any of our merchandising opportunities. We encourage everyone to get into a dialogue with your users, replying to both good and bad reviews. It'll make sure there's not a mutiny on your store page. So here's an example from one of my developers, Zombodroid. Uh, if you ever need an awesome app to make memes, I suggest you check them out. But you can see how they're actively responding to low reviews and asking the user to email them at their support address. This serves a few purposes. First, it's going to help increase engagement. Second, it looks much better to users who have not yet downloaded the app to show that the developer is willing and able to respond to technical questions and support them. And again, after you've worked with the user on their issue, going back and asking them to update their review can result in an increase in your ratings and higher stars. So as the song goes, in the Navy, you can sail the seven seas. Well, if we're doing all of that traveling, 
we also need to make sure that we're going to be speaking the right language for the country whose port that we're in. Let's continue our focus on the user with a little different twist, making sure that they can effectively interact with your Play Store listing and app because it's in their language. So within the developer console, you already have access to a number of optimization tips and recommendations. And these now include localization and internationalization options to help you take your app global. You can see these recommendations bubbled up within the to-do section under optimization tips. Here you can see the recommendations to translate our store listing, make the screenshots and videos reflect our target APK language, and translate the actual strings within our app. So you can easily translate your Play Store listing page either by providing your own translation text or purchasing professional translations directly from the developer console. If you don't provide translation text for your store listing, Google Play will either show an automated translation or the default language setting for your application. But neither of these is ideal if your users have a local language preference. In addition to your Play Store listing page, you'll also want to make sure that your APK itself is translated into other languages. Fortunately, Google makes this extremely easy as well. Using the app translation service, you can easily purchase professional translations for your APK strings and in-app items as well. To find this option in the Google Play Developer Console, you'll want to sign in and select an app, and then click on APK on the left side. At the bottom, by this APK Translation Service option, you can click Start or Check Progress to launch the Google Play Translation Manager. After you've selected the language that you want to translate your app or the strings into, you can browse a list of third-party vendors who are pre-qualified by Google to offer high-quality translations. You can upload the strings that you want, select the destination or target language, and then choose your translation vendor based on time and price. You can see the estimates that are given in the Google Play Developer Console for each of these third-party options. Once you've purchased translations, you'll receive an email from your vendor and can then interact directly with them to work on your translations. Once you've added translations to your app's text strings, you can upload the translated APK file to Google Play, and translated versions will be available to users whose language preference matches the translation languages that you've added. If you stop by later, I actually have $100 translation service coupons that you can pick up at the tables over here after filling out either our developer profile or a review of this session. So now you should have a pretty solid Play Store listing, right? We've talked about best practices for your icon, title, description, and then using store listing experiments to optimize each of those for your users. And then we've even localized our APK to make sure that the language being displayed on the store listing and in the app itself is right for our users. I want to back up a second, though, and talk about strategies that you can use when actually developing your app in the first place. Google Play has a great tool called Alpha and Beta Testing that can help you prototype, iterate, test, and launch your app. Alpha and Beta Testing is configured directly in the Developer Console. You have the ability to upload the APK and distribute it before releasing to the public. Users always have to opt in to this functionality and can never leave reviews. And of course, Google loves data, so you'll have access to a wide range of statistics and information about the alpha and beta configurations to help you troubleshoot and fix issues. There are two ways to share your alpha and beta builds, open or closed. Close, alpha, or beta testing is invite only and managed through Google Groups. This means you'll need to add email addresses to a group, and then your users will have access to download the alpha and beta builds. 
You can also have an open beta, which includes a custom URL that anyone can join and opt into. The developer can set a maximum number of testers, and the overall progression might be a closed beta test to an open beta test, and then actually distributing that custom URL via social media to your biggest fans to get them early access and get them testing out your new app. A number of top developers have seen great success with alpha and beta testing to ensure that new releases are bug-free and successful. So now that you know how to launch a great app, the last topic I wanted to touch on today is a new, easy way to promote your brand on Google Play called developer pages. Think of this as the nose art on the planes of our aircraft carrier. It's going to get you attention, and your users are going to love it. So right now, if you click on a developer's name in Google Play, you're taken to a rather bland page that lists all of the developer's apps. Now, you actually have the ability to transform that space into a unique page on Google Play to promote your entire app catalog. With these developer pages, you're able to upload graphics, explain what your company is all about, and pick a special app to feature at the top. This gives you a single destination to promote all of your apps on Google Play, and many of our top partners have already created their developer pages. Check out AnyDo. They have a graphic banner at the top, a description of the company and the options that they offer, and then a featured app at the top of the screen as well. And we know that you guys are building for mobile, tablet, Wear, and TV, but developer pages look great on desktop too. So you can link to them from your app's website. Your own, it's your own personal branded page on Google. This is one of my developers, Yidio. They have an awesome graphic at the top, some eye-catching description, and again, that featured app on their developer page as well. Has anyone here created a developer page yet? Two, three, four? You guys, right? Not yet, soon. So Stephen and I have done a lot of talking so far, and I was hoping to do something interactive here where we could actually build a developer page together. Um, I don't know if you guys have your laptops with you. Is that something maybe we'd be interested in? Maybe not, thinking about it? All right, I'll run through the steps, and if you guys want to follow along with me real quick, we can do that too. It's so easy, it'll take a couple minutes if you have some graphics and tools ready for you. So at the top of the screen, we're just going to sign into the Google Play Developer Console and click on Developer Pages on the left. And then we want to enter some of the information that we're going to have about our Google Play Store listing. So promotional text, 140 characters to describe the brand, not to be confused with a tweet. Uh, you can even add translations of that as well. Uh, website, this should point to your company website or a website that's associated with one of the top apps, maybe the app that you're going to feature. Uh, throw in some graphic assets, so a developer icon that's going to be in the circle at the top of the page, uh, and a header image. This header image is going to be used not just on desktop, but that big screen space at the top, but also on mobile. It's for you know, the recommended app section, it's going to have the, the, that graphic taking up the full space across the screen. And then the featured app. So Play will auto-populate all the different apps you have in that developer account, and you can select one to pin at the top. So if you're having a special, if you have a seasonal item, uh, or something that you just want to promote a little more, you can click that featured app right there to sort of pin it to the top. I'll give you guys a couple minutes if you're, if you're clicking through any of them. I was hoping to even show off one or two awesome ones, but I, I think you guys are still working, so maybe we, can, uh, maybe we can sort of huddle over there later and we can look at some guys' developer pages. I want to thank everyone for coming to this session. A couple quick items that we can wrap up with, because uh, I know Steven and I have been talking a lot, but we do want to talk with all you guys individually too. And I think with a group this size, we can probably head over to the tables in the back um, and maybe chat with you guys one-on-one -on -one if you have any specific questions or issues with Google Play. A uh, couple things I'd love for you to do to help me out. So at the top right there,
It's a quick survey to tell me about this session. Did you like the topics we covered? Store listing, beta testing, developer pages. Did you find it helpful? And then number two, and I love this one because I got a custom URL with that big Android barbecue at the end. But I want you to fill out a developer profile. This is going to go directly to Steven and I. And if you have any questions, issues, need some help with Google Play, strategies or tips, let me know in that form and we're going to be able to respond to you. We also have a great book, Secrets to App Success on Google Play. This is written by Google, contains lots of juicy information about your Play Store listing. And if you fill out those two forms for me, I'd love to send you off with one today. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. But again, it'd be great to talk to everyone later over here. Thanks a lot.